Now that you've seen how to create a GUI application and work with the form object, let's go ahead and um, create a brand new application again. File project, and we want a visual C sharp, and we're going to do a Windows form, and we're going to work with buttons. So I'll call it button me because everything is about me, unfortunately. Here's our form object. We've already talked to you a lot about the form object. One of the most important things I do on my form object is I immediately change the name. Now remember, if you're not seeing the name show up, first of all, make sure the properties window is showing. If not, view properties window. And if name isn't showing up here at the top, then click on the little A through Z, and that will bring the name up so you can see it. First thing I do is I change my, my main form object name. I want it to be FRM main. And then the other thing I always change is I change the text, which is that title right there. And we'll just say welcome dot dot dot. Do whatever you want on that. There's our object. Now let's go ahead and drop a button on that form. Here's our button. I'm going to resize it a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. This button is an object. And if I look over here in the properties window, it says it's called button one and it is a systems windows forms button object that's the hierarchy of where that class is built and so I could come here to the name and I could call it BTN close that is now the name for that button not not the text that's showing up but the actual name of the object that you're gonna work with and then you have all of these attributes that you can work with for instance back color and you could choose back color and custom and say we want a blue button and you could even put an image on there if you wanted um, notice that a lot of these are the exact same properties you saw in the form object now why would that be why would they have a lot of the same object or the same attributes same properties it's probably because of the hierarchy of where the button object comes from so somehow in the Visual Studio C Sharp hierarchy, these must somehow go up the chain to where a lot of these things become common and they're just inherited so that each class gets those common attributes. Now what does that mean? It means if you can learn one class really well and learn all of their properties and all of their events, then that's going to make learning all of the objects easier in Visual Studio. For instance, so we already talked about background color and image and cursor enabled. Enabled says whether or not you can click and work with that button. Um, font, what font do you want to use? What four color? Currently the four color is black. I'm going to go change that four color to be white. What font do you want to use? Well, I can click on the plus sign or I could click on this ellipsis. The ellipsis brings up this window. I could say I want bold or clicking on that plus and minus sign I could have just chose chosen bold and notice that the button is or the font is bold there now uh, do we want an image on the button tab index we'll come back to that a little bit later but what it means on a tab stop is if you have a whole bunch of items on a form and you press the tab key the tab key says where do you go next where do you go next where do you go next for instance, let's go ahead and put another button there and another button. And I'm not going to do anything with those buttons. I just want to show you how tab works. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And it's going to display our form with our three buttons. And we'd have to fix that and make them look nicer. Currently, this button has focus. Tab. That button has focus. Tab. That button has focus. Shift. Tab. Shift. Tab. So that's called the tab order. It keeps track of where do I go next if you press the tab key or the shift tab key. That's what the attribute tab stop means. And tab index actually says, what's the order? That tab index is 0. This tab index is 1. This tab index is 2. And so it keeps track of where do you go next if you press the tab key. Another thing that you could do if you have more than one component on your form, you can click on the View Tab Order menu item. And that actually shows you the number. 
And I could change those numbers visually right there. I could just say, yeah, you're going to be 1, you're going to be 2, you're 0. I can change those numbers and now run it. And it should jump when I press Tab from here to here to here. Let's see if that works. So Tab, Tab, Tab. And that's called the Tab Order and the Tab Stop. That's important to use because that tells the user where do I go next if I press the tab key. Now we'll go ahead and turn the tab order back off, view tab order, and those are off. If I want to get rid of an item, just click on it, press delete. Or another thing you could do is hold the control key down and lasso. Control and lasso. And that allows you to grab more than one item. Text. Text is the caption for the button. Just like text was the caption up here on this form, we could change that to be, I think we said welcome before. I must have pressed a key. This one we can click on, choose text, and we can type in the word close. And you see the close looks just like that. Now if I came over here and I said close with an ampress sign, the and sign, before the L, you can't see it very well. Let me see if I can make the button bigger. And let me make the font bigger for that button so you can really see it show up. We're going to have a big button. Can you see that the L is underscored? That becomes the hotkey now that you could press Alt L and it will execute that button. Uh, visible, that's another great one. Visible true and visible false. Visible false, let me go ahead and run it. Now it doesn't show up. But I could dynamically control whether that button shows up in source code. For instance, let me drop another button on there. And we're going to change that name to be Click Me. And we're going to change the name of that button to be BTN Show. Now what I want to show you are the events associated with this button. Click on the lightning bolt, and one of the events that it has is the click event. So you could click on the event and double click right here, and it takes you to the source code that you can access the event handler for that button. It now says, let me come back here, if you ever click on this button, we're going to go to that method. Here's the method. Its scope is private, only visible in the class, doesn't return anything. There's the name of the method. It receives a parameter called sender of type object, another parameter called e of type event args. We're not going to worry about that for now. But what I want to do is through my C sharp code, I could now say btn close dot visible equals true. And let's see what happens if I run that code now. Remember by default we said it wasn't visible. Now it's visible. Is there a way that we could turn it off or on depending on what it is? How about back here on that event? Remember if you can't get to the event, click on the button and go to click. Another shortcut is just double clicking on the button and that takes you to the click event. We could say if btn close dot visible equal true then let's turn it to false. Otherwise, let's turn it to true. Now, if I was going to be a good structured programmer, even though there's only one statement, I'd probably do this just to make sure that it's really readable and we don't have any problems. So this now says, if I click on that show button, execute this event handler, this method, that says, are you visible? Yes, don't be visible. Are you visible? No, be visible. Let's run it and see if it works. Visible, not visible. So that's how you can control what a button does if you click on it. Go back to the form designer. Let's go modify this method. That if you ever click on this, we call the click event handler. Remember you could do it by coming over here and double clicking. Or the shortcut is just double click. And we could say this dot close, parenthesis, parenthesis. That now says if you ever click on the button close, we're going to do this method, which will close the form. The word this refers to the form. Why? 
because that's the class that we're in, FRM main. So anytime you see the word this, you're referring to the form object that you're working with. Let's go run it one more time. Not visible, visible, close. And that closes the application. Other events that you have that you might want to look at. Um, key down and key press, key up are good ones. Did you click on it? Did you press the mouse down? Did you press the mouse up? Did you hover over it? Did you leave it? Um, what if we did this? Let's go into that button and say mouse hover. Double click on it. Button show dot text equals I am hovering. Let's go back to the form designer. And so if we hover on this one, we're going to change that button that says I am hovering. What if I leave? Let's go back to the event. We're going to leave focus. In other words, I'm going to press tab and go to another button. Double click there. And let's say button close dot text equals I am leaving focus. In other words, I'm leaving the button. It no longer has focus. Somebody else is going to get focus. Let's run this and see what happens. First of all, let's do a click me. I'm going to hover. Notice it changed. I am hovering right there. Right? And if I leave focus, I press tab because I'm leaving focus. It says I am leaving. Tab, back in. Tab, I am hovering. Great things we can do. So what you can see is with the button object, you can control how it looks with the attributes and you can control how it responds with the events and click is probably the main one let's say that we really don't want that click event though if I come over here and I just try to delete the event C sharp isn't going to be very happy so the best way to, to remove event handlers associated with the button is the following I'm clicking on the close button and I'm going to come down and let's do the button leave and I'm just going to highlight that event press delete save go back to the code still there now what it's doing is it's trying to protect you it is now removed the event associated with that button for leave but it left the code the reason it left the code is because you actually have source code inside the parentheses in the curly braces if I got rid of that and if I once again had it attached to the leave event handler right to here come back over to here and I don't want that event to be there how can I get rid of it well can I just press delete and save come back over to here and it still left it and the reason it did is once again it said you've done something there I'm not gonna let you get rid of that until you decide you truly want to get rid of that event handler so if you ever have a time where you can't delete that event as long as you've made sure you've cleared it out here and as long as you've made sure that you've removed it over here let me go ahead and remove that whoops we'll we'll highlight it and delete and press enter I can now come over here and actually delete it safely so if you're struggling to delete it you can delete it safely by making sure there's no code in it making sure it's not attached and you can build it and you'll notice that uh, in this case we have a little error and so what you can do is click on that error and it might take you to another screen now this is only if you're having problems deleting that method but the nice thing is Visual Studio is going to try to help you you can click on this line and it says hey here's what's going on here's the problem you have is that you're still trying to call this button leave in our form designer and this is going to be the init components which I showed in the form video now hopefully you won't have this problem deleting but in case you ever do it's nice to realize you can actually go and control what happens yourself and come in here and find that code so let's go back to the code that's causing the error and we'll go to that error line 
and here it is right here and I can actually say you know what yeah I really do want that gone save it build and now it works hopefully you don't run into a problem like that hopefully you can just come over here highlight delete and it's gone um, we can even try it one more time with the mouse hover let's come here highlight it delete press enter save it if I come back to the code it's still there but it's not attached to anything so once again if I try to just delete this on my own save it and build it that time it actually worked and clean files up so you shouldn't run into the problem but in case you do you've now seen all you have to do to fix it is come over to that form designer and drop into the initialize component method and go find any errors in there and you can clean it up it's best not to mess with this file but if you ever make a mistake you do have the ability to do it but that's how you can work with a button and button events and button properties.